you're tuning into the channel. This is Crumpets Tea and Sewing. I am T, and in today's video, I want to share with you two projects that I am working on. Um, the first pattern that I am working on this week is Simplicity 1278. And the second pattern that I will be working on this week is Simplicity 8242. Both of these patterns are reproduction patterns by Simplicity. The first pattern, the 1278, is a 1950s vintage pattern. It's a reproduction pattern. And then the second pattern is a 1940s vintage reproduction pattern as well. So for Simplicity 1278, this pattern has three variations. So view A has three quarter length sleeves and views B and C has um, short sleeves, but um, all views have like this really cute pleated detail um, around the neck of the garment. And that's what really attracted me to this pattern. I like the scallop detail that's at the base of the garment as well. And that's why I wanted to do view C. I really didn't see any differences between views B and C. As far as I can tell, they're pretty much the same. If you look at the back of the envelope, at the line drawing, you'll see um, that this pattern calls for two half an inch buttons. And those buttons go up at the top at the neck. And it also calls for a 14 inch invisible zipper. And that zipper is supposed to go on the side of the garment. I am not a fan of side zippers. So I am going to slightly alter this pattern so that the invisible zipper will go down the back of the garment instead of going on the side of the garment. So I think that's the only alteration that I am going to be doing to this particular piece. For this pattern, I chose this really pretty floral uh, printed fabric that I purchased from Vogue Fabrics at the beginning of the year. I purchased this when I was still in Wisconsin. It's a blue, pink, and teal uh, floral printed pattern on a, a brown fabric. And so it's just really cute. And I think that this uh, really complements the season. We're in late July, entering into August. And August is like that transitional month where you're going from summer and you're about to enter into fall. And I felt like this fabric uh, complements the season really well. And so that's why I chose this fabric from my stash to do this project. The second fabric that I chose for this project is this blue crepe back satin fabric. It is just a gorgeous fabric. I love crepe back satin. Um, as you can see on this side of the fabric, it has a lot of sheen. Um, that's the satin portion of the fabric. And this side of the fabric is more of a matte finish. And it, this is the crepe side of the fabric. I am going to be using the crepe side of the fabric for the outer um, portion of the garment. And for the um, inner part of the garment, the part that's going to be facing my body, I am going to be doing this uh, satin on that side. I really love these two fabrics together. I feel like they complement one another just beautifully. So that is my plan for this week. It is Monday morning. It's eight o'clock in the morning. I'm hoping to have this project done by Friday. I just want to let you know that this video is not a sew along. It's more of a vlog in my progress of the, of the project. If you have, um, made these patterns before please comment below and let me know what your experience was like with the project things that you like things you didn't like if you have not made these patterns before but you are interested in knowing more about it maybe things that i did not address in this video please put all those comments and 
and concerns down below and I will try to get to your comments as soon as possible. I hope that you all have a wonderful experience uh, watching the progress of this video. For this project, I did do a mock-up. As you can see, I put in all my necessary adjustments here, um, indicating here what I did. So I cut a size 14. Uh, that's uh, I cut to my bust measurements and um, but my size uh, going down my waistline um, I needed one inch on all sides uh, to be able to fit this to be able to fit this shirt the bust measurements are perfect I cut to my bust measurements and thankfully um, the bust measurements with ease in this pattern is just perfect for me. For my arm, because I have really large biceps, it's almost impossible for me to use a sleeve pattern right out of the envelope. I always have to do some kind of adjustment. As you can see here, I kept the size 14 for the actual arm, but uh, by the armhole, I had to increase the size to a size 24 because my arms are very big. And this particular pattern does not have a size 24. I just had to increase the size based on the uh, measurements that were already there from the pattern. So this particular pattern goes up to a size 22. I just increased on each side I believe it was a half of an inch. So each um, size up was a half of an inch. And so I just increased it a half of an inch on both sides, giving me the size 24. I wanted to uh, show you the cool detail in the neckline of this particular pattern. It is so beautiful. I cut out the pieces so that I can do a mock-up with my muslin. And so that's what you're seeing right now. And I just wanted to make sure that I can uh, fit this uh, particular shirt with all of the adjustments that I have made. And I just wanted to go ahead and show you the detail in the neckline of this uh, shirt. So this is the top of the neckline of this uh, shirt. This is the front. Uh, it has two fronts. So the front piece is cut into two pieces. So instead of cutting your pattern on a fold, you're going to cut two pieces and it's going to be the left front and the right front. So this is the left front, I believe. Yes, yeah, so this is the left front and the details here, what you do with this pattern, you would put pleats in the top of the neck. So this is the original pattern for it. And uh, these are the pleats that go on the top of the neckline. So I transferred those markings to the muslin and I want to see if this muslin is going to fit me before I go ahead and cut it out on my uh, more expensive fabric. I'm gonna take a pen out here so you can see. There is a dotted line and there is a solid line on the pattern. And the dotted line indicates that you're going to move the solid line over to the dotted line. And, and it has arrows to indicate which way you're going to be moving the pleats. So you just fold it over and then you make your pleat. And instead of top stitching these down, you would just base this along this edge before you put your facing on. So I thought that was a really nice, cool detail that they added here. I have not had the chance to put all the um, pieces together yet. But um, after I put everything together, I'm going to go ahead and do a fit and see if, if I um, need to make any adjustments. Okay, so I need to get back to work.
Right now I'm just in the fitting process and everything is looking like it's going to fit. Uh, my dress form is um, a little bit smaller in the waist than I am by about three and a half inches. So I do have to take that into consideration, which I did. Okay, so remember how in the beginning of the video I said that I was not going to do a mock-up for the skirt? I actually did do a mock-up for the skirt and the reason why I chose to do a mock-up for the skirt is because um, when I tested out the waistband I thought that it didn't really fit me all that great and so um, I wanted to be able to uh, make another waistband at the amount of inches and also seam allowance to the waistband that I redrafted so that I can attach it to the skirt. Well, during that whole process of figuring things out, I uh, came to the conclusion that I was going to have to uh, re redraft the top of the skirt as well. I don't fit into the category of uh, simplicities, uh, <laughs> the way in which they design their patterns. So um, like for a 38 inch bust, it would be a 30 inch waist and a 41 inch hips. Now, while the bust and the hips are fine, I would need to add a couple more inches to the waist. And so hence, that's why I needed to adjust the waistband a couple inches. Um, but instead of redrafting the whole skirt, what I decided to do is take it out of the seam allowance. Instead of doing 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I did a half an inch seam allowance. I have uh, four different seam lines. So you have the front seam, and then you have the side seams, and then you have the back seam as well. Now this doesn't fit my dress form perfectly because again, I needed to add a couple more inches, not just to the pattern, but also the dress form is a size 30 inch waist as well. And I'm a 32, 33. So I needed to add a couple more inches to the waistline and it fits perfectly. All I needed to do was take it out of the seam allowance. So I did not have to redraft the skirt. All four sections of the skirt are still per in perfect symmetry. I didn't have to make any kind of adjustments there and everything is coming along great. So far, I'm really happy with this skirt. I can't wait to do the jacket. I am going to do this whole outfit for my anniversary collection. I'm going to be doing an anniversary collection towards the end of the year, um, preparing for my actual anniversary, um, my uh, 13th year, my 13 year anniversary with my husband. I'm going to do an anniversary collection and I'm excited to have this be part of that collection. And I'm definitely going to do this, um, this jacket. Now that I have the mock-up pieces done and completed and I have an idea of what it's going to look like, I can actually cut the pattern out on my, my fabric and get to sewing. Okay, so I am happy to report my progress on this skirt. I am just so happy with the progress of it. Um, currently, it's on my dress form, and as I mentioned before, my dress form, um, the waist measurements, um, it does not fit my waist measurements, so it is um, loose here. It won't be this loose on myself. Um, also, I was not able to uh, put the zipper in yet, so that's also why it's very loose on the dress form. But I really like the style. It's just so 1950s, and it's really cute. I really love this style. And the color also, the color is definitely something that they would have worn back then. I'm really glad that I chose this fabric and I am grateful that I chose the color as well. With that said, let me show you what I need to do thus far. So as I mentioned, I did not have a chance to put this zipper in, but I did all of the finishing seams for this. So um, I'm really grateful for that, that I've been able to finish the seams. 
and I haven't decided for the waistband I have not decided if I want to do a stitch in the ditch so basically what that means is I would take my needle with a top stitch and just go into this ditch here and sew in the ditch to catch this on the back the waistband on the back and then um, tack it down that way or the other option that I am considering is doing a whip stitch going across the waistband. And I think since this is a 1950s skirt, I think doing this uh, second option would be better. Just going across the band and doing a whip stitch. It will really add the character to the style. The other thing that I would like to mention is some of the alterations that I've made on this particular piece. This, uh, the pattern calls for a waistband that overlaps um, on the side and then uh, your zipper would go on the side of the, the garment. Well, I did not do it that way, primarily because my, the size that I chose for the pattern did not meet my size so I had to make slight alterations to the waistband in order for it to fit my uh, my measurements and when I did that it made it so that I had less room to do the overlapping method but I had a little bit um, too uh, too much fabric to do a regular invisible zip so I'm going to go with the second option. I'm just going to go ahead and do a regular modern day invisible zipper. Um, and that zipper is going to go on the back of the, um, the garment down the center back instead of going on the side seams. So that's what I'm going to do for this particular project. In the future, I'll just um, make a note in my sewing journal that in the future, I need to make sure that I adjust the waistband enough to be able to do the overlapping method. And I do want to do another skirt. I want to actually do the entire outfit. I want to do the jacket and the skirt for my anniversary collection. So I want to make sure that I make those um, recommendations and note that in my sewing journal. I really like the satin side of this fabric but it's just too shiny and too formal to wear um, to church that's why i chose the crepe side of the fabric because the satin uh, side is just way it's too much sheen and it's just too much to wear to church i have not had a chance to uh, put all the pieces for the the blouse together yet but i did cut out all the pieces so i am excited about that I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and work on the blouse for a little bit. It's Thursday. It is possible that I can get this done before tomorrow. It's like 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and my son is still asleep. So we'll see how much progress I get done before he wakes up. But that um but my goal is to have all of this finished by tomorrow. Um, afternoon so hopefully all my goals will be met and I will have something report on Saturday okay so here is my progress on the simplicity 1278 uh, 1950s uh, shirt it's very beautiful guys I really love it because I am doing something different to the back um, I definitely have even more fabric than what I originally um, had anticipated. So the original pattern, um, instead of putting a zipper going down the back of the garment, you would actually have um, buttons here. So you would put loops on your garment and then buttons on the garment. And I think it opens in the back a little bit down uh, the neck to about right here and uh, to the back and so you don't have a whole lot of um, skin showing in the back it's just a, a little bit of um, 
of an opening in the back. It's more for style than it is to get in and out of the garment. The, uh, this pattern does uh, call for a zipper. And as I indicated before, the zipper goes on the side underneath the arm. And that's where I'm getting a lot of that extra fabric from. And I did not account for a lot of that. The other problem that I had was with this neck band here. It was somewhat confusing. Um, I would definitely say that this pattern is for an advanced sewer. I had some troubles uh, with the neck band. The instructions were not as clear as I had hoped. And I definitely believe that the instructions could have been a little bit um, more clear. There were points in the process where I was just so confused that I had to just sit the instructions to the side and walk away from the, the project because it was just so frustrating and confusing. And after uh, giving it some time and some thought and going back to it later on, I was able to decipher what was what the instructions were saying and what to do with the pattern. I think overall it's really a nice pattern. Like I said, the neckband definitely can, can use some more clarification in that area, mostly because the instructions don't tell you to cut out two uh, neck bands for the front and then two back neck bands. So you have um, this uh, neck band here that goes all the way around the front of the garment. And then you have a piece back here, which is the back neck band. Now these are not um, uh, facings for the gar garment. And so I was under the impression that you were going to use this neck band as part of the facing um, and the instructions don't tell you that but you're supposed to cut out two neck bands instead of one and then four back uh, neck bands instead of uh, cutting out two because you're going to be using um, the other set for your facing and like I said the instructions did not um, clarify that. Here are the instructions. Before you attach the neck band, you put in your pleats on the top of the shirt on the left and the right of the garment. And then here's step six. It's just uh, re-indicating uh, what you need to do. Step seven, um, you know, do your stay stitching around the neck of the back. Now here, we move from step 11, which was securing and closing up that front, uh, that center front. And then it just jumps to number 12, apply interfacing to wrong size of front neck band and uh, back neck band sections following manufacturer's instructions. Machine base three eighths of an inch from lower edge of the front neck band between large and small dots with right sides together stitch front neck band to back neck band at the shoulder seams. So all of this is just very straightforward. But where I got confused at with the neck band is that um, like I indicated before on the pattern pieces for the front left band, for the front neck band and for the back neck band, it did not indicate how many cuts you were supposed to make. And because it didn't indicate, you know, cut two of uh, neck band, front neck band, and cut two of back neck band, et cetera, et cetera, like most patterns um, generally do, it didn't have any cutting instructions at all as to how many you are supposed to cut. So I just went on with the instructions trying to figure out, okay, what am I supposed to do to secure this neck band? How am I supposed to 
um, make sure that the raw edges are not showing because if you look here at number 16 you're going to be taking your outside which is the right garment you're going to pin the pleated edge of the right front to the upper edge of the neck band and so that makes it so that you have these raw edges and so I was just very confused because I didn't understand what was going on well when I went back over the instructions a third time I found this note here from the manufacturer you have cut out two front neck band sections and four back neck band sections one of the front bands and two of the back bands will be used as the bands these will be interfaced and stitched to the outside of the garment the remaining sections will be used as the facings and when you and when completed are on the inside of the garment facing your body so that would have been helpful for me if i would have known that in the beginning when I uh, was making my cuts and I had to go back and cut another front uh, band and two more back bands in order to close off my uh, band and, and not have the raw edges showing on the garment as you see here. So this is all the raw edge of the garment here because this is the front neck band and the back neck band with uh, the interfaced piece on the garment as well. Now I have to attach the front band and the back bands um, creating a shoulder seam and then attach it at the shoulder seam so that I can um, close all of this off and not have these raw edges showing. So that was the only thing that I had an issue with and I figure I better go ahead and document it because somebody else might have the same issue because the pattern pieces they don't indicate how many cuts you're supposed to make and if you were to overlook that small note in, in the section of the instructions, then you would be completely confused as I was. I wish I would have went with the solid color. I feel like the floral um, kind of takes away from the beauty of the pleats a little bit. But um, all in all, I think it's a beautiful piece and I definitely would make this pattern again. Uh, please stay tuned to learn more about um, the rest of the process and my final thoughts and review of the pattern. So I created this tie out of the same fabric. I'm not really for certain on how I am going to tie it. Originally, I wanted uh, like a pussy bow tie, but I'm just gonna go with this tie here. I didn't make it long enough for it to be like a pussy bow tie. I just wanted something that um, would uh, cover up that gap that's between the two points where the first pleat starts and where the second um, pleat starts on the left and the right sides. So I just wanted something that would detract attention from that and I thought that this uh, cute little tie would work. So here is the final finished garment and my pattern review of both Simplicity 1278 and Simplicity 8242. So um, this, the shirt, I really love this shirt. Um, I can't say enough good things about this shirt. I did run into a few complications later on with the garment. It was a minor complication. That complication was with the neck. As you can see here, the pleats at the top of the neck, it, it doesn't quite match um, the actual pattern and on this side as well um, I have fewer 
pleats. I don't know how that happened throughout the construction of this garment, but I got really annoyed with it. And it's not really that noticeable and it's not bad, but I got really frustrated with the project because I wanted it to come out so perfectly and I wasn't able to get every single stitch in line and I wasn't able to get every single detail in line and I became very frustrated. And so um, to move on and uh, to bring a different look to the garment and a, a different um, feel to the garment, I decided to add this tie here and I think it looks really lovely. I feel like a shirt like this really needs something extra to it. Although the tie isn't needed or necessary, I just felt like it looked better with it than without it. My mother-in-law suggested that I add a snap-on piece here um, at the back of the garment so I can just snap it on and off. I decided that I'm never going to wear this garment with the tie off. So I went ahead and stitched it to the garment. So this is actually stitched on the garment. It just looked really plain without having this bow here and um and you can't really see the pleats from a distance anyway and so i felt like this bow really added to the details and and the character of the shirt i'm really happy with the sleeves normally i can't do any sleeves without having some kind of puckers in it but uh, this worked out really well for me. But overall, I really love this garment. It definitely is a uh, pattern for an advanced sewist. I would not recommend this pattern to beginners. Um, even intermediate sewers might find it a little bit difficult with some of the instructions and some of the work that you have to do it's not anything hard, but there is a lot of work that goes into the construction of this garment, not just the pleats and the neckband. The scallop detail here at the bottom of the shirt, um, that can be quite challenging um, for a beginner as well, because you have to put facing on and you have to overlap and stitch those areas and there is a lot of uh, maneuvering and figuring things out um, as you go on with the pattern because the instructions do not give you a complete and accurate, you know, step-by-step -step guide to finishing this garment. The instructions are there and um, they're clear. But there are some things that you are expected to know and uh, they kind of leave that up to the sewist and i believe that's because this pattern is meant for an advanced sewer so again i would not recommend this pattern to someone who is just beginning or an, someone who is just entering into the intermediate phase of their sewing i would say someone who is um, advanced enough uh, that they have worked on pleats several times and they've worked on scalloped or curved edges a lot. Also someone who has a complete understanding of how to put in an invisible zipper. That's pretty much it with the shirt with the blouse portion of this project. If I were to do it again, the things that I would do differently I would follow the instructions and put the two buttons in the back of the garment and have that um, back open in the back and then I would put the side zipper on, on the side. I found that there is a slight difference um, in the back of the garment with the seam allowance for the back of the garment 
than there is for the side, the left and the right side of the garment. And that is because I put the zipper in the back of the garment and I had to use um, a different seam allowance for that. So that's the final review for the blouse. I will post pictures um, in the at the end of the video for you to see how it looks on me. The Simplicity 8242 skirt was very easy for me. Um, although I would say it would not be easy for a beginner. I think that this pattern is more of an intermediate um, pattern. I think a beginner can do this pattern if they are determined to do an invisible zip and also how to do a uh, overlap zip. Now, I did not do the overlapping, the, that style of overlapping the uh, waistband over the zipper. Instead, I just went ahead and I made a regular waistband and I um, used the center back as the area where I put the um, invisible zipper. This particular pattern has four different panels. So you're cutting out four different pieces. So you're cutting out two front pieces and two back pieces. And I really like the style um, of this garment. This is definitely a 1950s um, or 1940s vintage style having this center front. <laughs> um, at first, my daughter, when she looked at the pattern, she thought that just does not look right. But then after looking at the skirt, especially having a look at the skirt with the blouse, she fell in love with the entire outfit and the skirt. And she begged me to go to Joanne's to find this same fabric so that I can make her a skirt as well. What else can I say about this pattern? This pattern is just, it's very simple, very easy. Basically, you take the two uh, uh, front pieces and you sew them and you create a uh, seam in the, down the middle and then you uh, sew the left side front and then the right side front to the two back pieces and then you get your seams on the side. And then for the back of the garment with the zipper, you just, uh, you put your zipper in and you make sure that you mark the area where your zipper will stop. And then you go ahead and you continue to create a seam down the garment. And it's just that simple, that easy. And I finished all the seams with my serger so it's really nice and clean all the way throughout the the garment on all side seams and uh, for the bottom the hem i just did a regular straight stitch going around and it's five eighths of an inch folded twice and so i did that the only issue that i had with this particular um garment the skirt is at the end of the project, my needle became really dull. And without me knowing it, I started to skip stitches. And it was really frustrating because I couldn't figure out for a while what was going on. I adjusted tension, I changed the stitch length, and satin is really finicky and really funny to work with. Um, so you can change your needle and still get um, and still skip stitches um, not knowing that you also need to change your tension after changing your needle again and just a bunch of different things were going on but I powered through it and even though I have a couple skip sh skipped stitches throughout my garment um, I feel like it's it's just wonderful it's great so it's not you can't really see it. Nobody's going to notice it, so I'm not going to complain about it. And I'm not going to go and seam rip the entire um, hem of the skirt just so that I can, you know, save it from fork. Just so that I can save it from a couple of skip stitches. I'm not going to do all that. So, um, but that's the only problem that I ran into with the skirt. The longest 
and most dreaded part of this project is when I did the whip stitching on the inside of the waistband. So here are the whip stitches. So what I did, I just um, went across the entire length of the band and I whip stitched this all the way across to give it more of that 1950s vintage style look. But after I did that, I realized, I thought to myself, well, I surged the ends <laughs> and that's not something that in the 1950s that they would have done, not for home projects anyway, but whatever, I, it's done, I did it. I did the whip stitching and I did the serging for a more finished look. So I'm really pleased and happy with the construction of this garment. And I'm, I can't wait to get a lot of wear out of it. This particular skirt can use a hook and an eye up at the top. Um, it's not necessary but I could put one there and I think I'm going to do that later on. But for the rest of the construction of this garment, I think it just came out wonderfully and I'm so happy that I made this and it's just a beautiful garment. So that's my final review. I hope that you had a fun time watching this, the process of me making these two patterns. If you are interested in me sewing a particular vintage style dress, skirt, or shirt, or a pair of pants. Please put that information in the comment section below. Tell me what pattern and the style and why you think I should make that particular, uh, make that particular pattern. And we can see about um, doing some more vintage sewing. I, it's a goal of mine and I really want to continue to do that. So stay tuned for some pictures of me in the finished garment. And don't forget to um, like this video and give it a thumbs up if you found it educational, entertaining, or just something that you really enjoyed. And if you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel for future notifications and updates on more sewing projects like these. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.